Hello everybody. Hope everyone is doing well. I am doing much better. Thank you. Excuse me, I'm sucking on a cough drop because I keep losing my voice, as you can tell. Um, we've had an elder leak the information worksheet. It is five pages. Now I'm going to put the link down below to this. Thank you very much, Atlantis. Very much appreciated. And um, it's interesting because they've updated their um, worksheet for CSA. And um, it is disturbing. It's disturbing. You know, they have forms for everything, but anyway. I'm not going to cover all of this, like I said, because I'm losing my voice. Um, now, if you can get this and you can read through it, um, instructions. So they have instructions on how to fill out the actual worksheet. And here's the actual worksheet right here. Um, well, here, number two, the two elders assigned to investigate the matter or the judicial committee assigned to handle the matter should review this worksheet in its entirety in Chapter 14 in the Shepherd Book before proceeding. During the investigation process or the judicial committee process, the assigned elder should, if possible, speak with the accused and with the adult victim in your congregation. Do not speak with a minor without first calling the service department for guidance. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to read through this whole thing because my voice just won't take it at this time. But, I mean, they have such detailed instructions, like complete a separate worksheet for each victim. Um, read all the questions carefully and provide complete but concise answers. Answer all questions. Do not guess or speculate. If an answer is unknown, enter unknown. Um, and then they say to you, referring to the accused, use the full, full name, but when referring to the victim, use initials only. Um, providing dates, spell out the name of the month, okay. Now I wanted to go down to number four here. After obtaining the facts and after any congregation action has been taken, the two elders or the judicial committee who completed the worksheet should review it carefully to ensure that the information being provided is accurate and complies with these instructions. Thereafter, the elder who received the worksheet from the service department should send the completed worksheet back to the service department by replying to the original email message in his jwpub.org inbox. Uh, with the completed worksheet included as an attachment. And this is in bold. Do not send the worksheet using any other method and do not include any other attachments. Point five. Once the service department sends final direction on this matter to the body of elders, all copies of this worksheet, printed or electronic, should be destroyed. Yeah, got to get rid of the evidence. Now this is in bold also. Do not retain any copies of this worksheet in the congregation file or elsewhere. Yeah. But um, they have like congregation information at the top and then information regarding the accused. And then like on the next page, and there's lots of questions. You know, for example, um, current spiritual standing uh, current marital status, marital status at the time the matter occurred. Is the accused related to the victim? Does the accused have access to minor children? Has the accused confessed to the matter? The two elders investigating the matter or the judicial committee should ask the accused the following question. Have you as an adult ever been involved or accused of sexual sins with any minors other than the victim? Like they're going to be truthful. How is the accused viewed by the congregation? How is the accused viewed by the community? Information regarding the victim. Current spiritual standing. They want the name, when they were baptized. 
If the victim is still a minor, what is the current spiritual standing of each of the victim's parents, guardians? What does that matter? How does the victim view the accused? Well, how do you think they view them? My God, some of the, it's like, are you really that dumb? Yeah, Watchtower is that dumb. Um, you know, are they a minor? Now, this point 12 I thought was interesting. I highlighted that. Did the elders inform the victim or anyone else who reported the matter to his right to report it to the secular authorities? Shepherd of Flock of God, book chapter 14, paragraph 4. If no, please explain. Summary of the matter. Point one, describe specifically what took place. They want details. They want dates, times, was this a single occurrence or repeated? Where did the matter occur? Um, age of the accused at the time it happened. Did the victim inform the elders of the matter? Did it, anyone report the matter to the secular authorities? Then they want to know when was the matter reported and by whom. What action did the secular authorities take? Is the accused any governmental restrictions? If the accused is a publisher, baptized or not, have two elders investigated the matter, what was the outcome? Were any announcements made in the congregation regarding the accused? If yes, what announcement was made and what date? Then any additional information that might be helpful. So it's just it's just disturbing. And the thing is, is right now, Watchtower and all these other religious organizations and many other organizations that aren't religious are being exposed of how they handle these matters. And this is great. This is great because they all need to be exposed. And like I said, I am going to put the link down below because Atlantis has shared this on JehovahWitness.com with everybody. And also, um, there, ha there has been um, some updates on Norway and AvoidJW.org and Larchwood on Twitter has been covering it. And I'm going to put the link down below because they have, um, I believe they're up to day nine on the Norway case and it's getting interesting. And uh, let's see, they also had a live stream. Now they also have links to a YouTube video where some of the um, testimony was given in English. And then Larchwood, I thought this was interesting, in Norway, want to know how much Jehovah's Witnesses slash Watchtower paid out for this trial alone? 1,100 hours on lawyers. Risdale, who is Watchtower's lawyer, fee alone was $600 per hour. 6100 um, and okay, I think that's Norwegian Kronos. Total $450,000 just on one lawyer for that case. Wouldn't you love for all the Jehovah's Witnesses to know where their donated funds are going? This is ridiculous. And the reason they have this amount is Watchtower had to admit their expenses to the court. So I will put the link here to Larchwood's um, post. Very good. Anyway, thank you everybody so much for watching and all of the love and support um, that you give us and the well wishes. I appreciate it. I tell you, this just really has kicked my backside. Three weeks, three weeks, and I'm still not 100%, but. I am trying to get, you know, at least the most important news out to everybody. And so we appreciate, you know, you taking the time out of your day to watch our videos. We appreciate it. So you all have a wonderful weekend. Bye.